suspended from school for two days and banned from all sporting events after wearing that eye paint. You can see there the black eye paint on his face. That's blackface. That's blackface. Holy race baiting, Batman. Welcome back to the JP Rex channel, my beautiful freedom loving friend, where we like to call out the lies, hypocrisy, and corruption of tyrants and Satan, shine the light of awareness on woke absurdities and highlight the amazing work of other freedom fighters. Now, one of the woke absurdities out there would be race baiting. In my opinion, what it is, is an intentional way of creating division while creating the illusion of racial unity. I would dare say race baiting, unfortunately, leverages the unfortunate real phenomenon of racism in order to make racial divides even more. It dilutes, it camouflages, I would dare say it makes actual racism harder to recognize and therefore almost starts to discredit it because they're making such uncredible claims in race baiting tactics. Now this is a ra racism, cool, like when it's there, call it out. Let's not do it. But race baiting, it's anti-racism, which is racism, just with a few letters in front of it. So the latest incidence of this is an eighth grader in a La Jolla, California school district who went to a football game and kind of dressing up, emulating players who wear black eye paint helps you know, reflect light. Uh, he's dressing up as that and, and even had a, a black security guard say, well, you actually need more. You need the spi spikes higher. But then the principal a week later calls a little boy into his office, the eighth grader, and says, you're suspended and you are banned from going to any sporting events. Now, preying on young kids, using that to leverage some sort of maybe woke political agenda, using kids for it, I would dare say that is not not very genuine. And a principal that does that probably isn't a good leader of kids. And of course, it's reminiscent not too long ago. I'm sure you saw this story. We reported on it here first. We, we were definitely not the first ones, but I did report on it. The Kansas City Chiefs fan, as you can see here, you saw the selective picture of him wearing black face paint on one side of his face. But this picture Definitely doesn't let you know it's just one side of his face. And uh, the de degenerate media outlet called Deadspin did a really aggressive attack on this, I believe, nine-year-old boy. And the writer of that Deadspin article, Mr. Phillips, even had this to say. The boy found a way to hate black people and Native Americans at the same time. And then the boy's mom comes out and says, as you can see in the title of this article, he is Native American. And of course, as you see the full picture, you can see that's that's not how you do blackface. That's a, a kid dressing up in the, the war paint of his favorite football team, which the mascot is a Kansas City chief, a Native American. He's a Native American, which all but proves this kid had no intention for this to be a portrayal of blackface. And in this latest case with an eighth grader in California, it also really appears to be he had no intention of it being blackface because it wasn't blackface. And on the Blaze Media's coverage of this, you can see like, uh, okay, this is blackface, but this is eye black and this is eye black. And for the record, Mr. Jimmy Kimmel, as you can see here, this is not blackface. And Justin Trudeau here, this is not blackface. And in this second picture of Justin Trudeau, when he was in high school, hard to tell because it's black and white, but he's wearing blackface. So in this picture of him wearing blackface, this is not blackface. And then a third picture of Justin Trudeau. Yes, a third picture of Justin Trudeau in blackface that you can see here. This is also not blackface. But this is blackface. I don't know if that's blackface. I don't know. It's like a, meant to be a black gentleman who has alopecia. So most of his face is not black. I don't know. But let's see if we can investigate further and find out is in fact this black eye paint trying to emulate football players. It is in fact blackface, right? Let's take a look. Yep, lock him up, lock him up. He's he definitely is definitely blackface. Politically persecuting kids for doing something that that they're not actually doing is that wrong? I kind of think it is. So luckily, 
in this new incident, this eighth grader's parents are suing the crap out of the principal, the superintendent, and everybody who signed off on this kid's punishment. J.A. joins us now along with his dad, da Daniel Amaduri, and their lawyer, Karen Swigert. Thank you all, all for joining us. Thank you and good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. 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 J.A., I know you live out in California, so thanks for waking up this early for us. Tell us what happened. That's his first mistake. Living in California is expect this to happen to you. Happened back in October at that football game. Uh, it was a normal day. Everything was normal. No one said anything. It was just a normal football game in La Jolla won. So you put the you put black eye paint like the football players do, because when you look at that picture, yeah. it's all over your face. But Brian, who is a, a sports enthusiast, my co-anchor, he said this is a lot of athletes actually do that. Yeah, that was the main point because I used to go to a lot of football. Well, games when I lived in Texas and I used to play football and sometimes we'd put that on if one of the kids brought it. Okay, and no one had a problem with it. In fact, what did the what the security wasn't there a security guard there who was who's also he's a black security guard and he came up to you and complimented you on it? Yeah, I asked him how did it look like? How did it look? And he said the spikes need to go higher. Sounds like that security guard was offended. Okay. All right. So, Dad, Daniel, um, tell us, y'all y'all were having a fun night. A week goes by, and then the principal calls your son into the office? Yeah, I was shocked. You know, there was no incident that night. And, um, you, you know, you can imagine in today's world, there's iPhones, there's thousands of people or over a thousand um, the actual, the other school is predominantly black. I mean, and, and nothing was said that night. There was no incident. He's an eighth grader, by the way, a small eighth grader. These are, it's a high school football game. There's staff there, there's teachers, there's police, security, nothing. Um, and then the following Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, nothing. Wednesday night, the, or Wednesday afternoon, the principal called Joseph or J.A. into the, um, um, office. And then the next morning, um, my wife and I showed up and he said he did blackface. And he was suspended for two days, and he was going to be banned from sports. The uh, principal is probably like, hmm, I need to establish a strong track record against racism. Unfortunately, I'm not seeing enough of it here. We're going to have to find what we're looking for. Call J.A.N. We got to give him a talking to. And that was when I showed the principal the picture from that night. And he, I thought that was going to end this whole thing. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, no, that's blackface. Wow. So, Daniel, I mean, you know your son. And I read an article last night that said your son had said, I didn't even know what blackface was. I'm in middle school. But maybe this would be controversial when you saw the picture. You saw your son that night. I was so convinced that it was going to vindicate him that picture. I wasn't actually at the game with him. So when I saw that picture, I was so relieved. I was like, wait a minute, this is explainable. And I thought when I showed the principal that, that that would clear the whole thing up, but it didn't. And it only got worse even after I appealed it. Yeah. Um, it, it, it didn't fix it. And I just couldn't believe it because anybody who's ever been to a sports game know that this is very normal. And these are kids that were playing hide and seek a few days prior at my house, boogie boarding. Um, you know, half of the group is my, is our minorities. Some of them African American. It's, it's just ridiculous that, 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 that this would be a, a racial incident that yeah. night. Well, J.A., this is what the disciplinary notice said, and this is on your record now, possibly forever, offensive comment and intent to harm. Did you make an offensive comment, and were you intending to harm? No, not at all. What would you like to say to your principal? Your principal will probably see this interview. <laughs> Dad, I think he's probably answer. going to be no... Co he'll let the lawsuit speak for itself, probably. Yeah, well played there, Dad. Uh, I, I think that was actually really well played. I think frivolous lawsuits are just trash. However, justified lawsuits have their place, as is this place. And, I, and I'm glad the kid's parents are standing up and protecting the kid and his rep reputation against these accusations that he, he made damaging comments and he had the intent to do harm. That is the time and place for parents to become protectors. You are trying to tarnish the reputation of my son and what will that do to his self-esteem? What will that do to his social status and an ability to feel a sense of belonging? It won't do good things. So the parents stepping in, using the sort of lawsuit against a principal, most likely with a political agenda to bolster his image as, I take a strong stance against racism while using racist tactics like, 
Look at that white kid. We can use him to make me look I'm a, like I'm a strong person against racism so that I can get my next promotion. That'll be good. Hats off to these parents. And I think these woke absurdities absolutely need to be called out. And I think race baiting is absolutely something, if anything, that would actually propagate actual racism because it dilutes it down. It's the boy who cried wolf. It makes it when there's an actual wolf and someone's crying out about the actual wolf, it makes it seem less significant, less believable, less relevant. And I don't think that is helpful. I think that creates more division and I don't think we need to fall for it. So with that said, that is the latest. I love seeing strong protector parents stand up for their kids. And this is a great example. Appreciate you watching this video with me, my beautiful freedom loving friend. I'll look forward to seeing you on our next one. But first I got something to tell you. Yeah. Parkour. I get stressed. You and I also live in a world filled with toxins. Plus, I like to look good and feel good. And I'm someone who wants to take control of my health. But the problem is, there's only so much time in the day. So how are you going to meet all these health objectives? Well, problem solved with a Bond Charge Infrared Sauna Blanket. The Infrared Sauna Blanket is my favorite sauna system I have ever found. It's the most cost-effective sauna system on the market. Plus, it's compact so it doesn't clutter up and take valuable space up in your home. The infrared sauna helps your body detoxify. It elevates your metabolism. You can burn up to 600 calories in a single sauna session. It reduces stress, promotes relaxation, helps with your sleep, and boosts those fat-burning heat shock proteins, my friend. Once I started using the Bond Charge infrared sauna blanket, it was like a dream come true because it helps me accomplish many health objectives all at once. Bond Charge makes infrared saunas easy, accessible, and affordable to you. If you want to start taking more control of your health with one of the most potent health devices on the market, then just go to bondcharge.com slash jpreacts. And while you're there, be sure to use the discount code jpreacts for 15% off. Enjoy, my friend.